All right, hey, shallow all my cow. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakak, Wadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And we are the Hebrew Israelites, which consists of the Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, Simul Indians, West Indians, and Haitians. And according to the Holy Scriptures, we're God chosen people. Shalom to all the brothers out there, pushes knowledge and sincerity and truth. Shalom to the few sisters and shalom to Israelite foreigners who were scattered abroad. And what you're looking at is a true depiction of the one that we call Jesus Christ, whose real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shai. <clears throat> And what you're looking at is a true depiction of the one they're going to call God, the one they're going to call Jehovah, whose real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh. When you call upon the Most High and His Son, you must say Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh means He exists, the existing one. Bahashem means in the name, and Yahweh Shai means He delivers. Our Lord and Savior has come back to deliver the elect out of the nation of Israel upon the destruction of the modern day Babylon. AKA America. All right, coming back, catch you with another lesson through the Holy Spirit. This is going to be based upon the Assyrian captivity of the 10 lost tribes. All right, who are the 10 lost tribes? They will, they will be considered the so called Latinos, Native Americans, and Simul Indians descent. All right, the Spanish speaking tribe and the Natives tribes. All right, and you have Israelites who are still scattered from the Assyrian captivity throughout the Middle East. So let's get right into it, man. It says, the Assyrian captivity or the Assyrian exile is the period in the history of ancient Israel and Judah. So why is it uh, broken up as ancient Israel and Judah? Because it all goes back to King Solomon. All right. After King Solomon went off <clears throat> as the king, um, forgot the name of the prophet who came to him and told him how the tribes was going to be divided, how his son was going to get, I think, two tribes and the rest going to go to his servant, Jeroboam. You got to look that up for yourself. So it all goes back to King Solomon, which is all based upon prophecy. Prophecy must be fulfilled. During which 7, 000, several thousand Israelites from the kingdom of Israel were forcibly relocated by the Neo-Assyrian Empire. This is one of many instances of the resettlement policy of the Neo-Assyrian em Empire. The kingdom of Israel was conquered by the Neo-Assyrian monarchs Tithlath, Pelazar III and Shalmanazar V. All right, when you deal with the whole situation with Tiglath Pelazar, <coughs> there's only a few tribes he took in, in captive as exile, but the main um, captivity was under Shalmanazar the fifth, and it finished it, and it pretty much it lasted like 20 years. So that's the main focal point we're gonna deal with is Shalmanazar the fifth. That's where the bulk of the nation of Israel. Now the nation of Israel, um, the northern kingdom, got uh, put in captivity and got sent out of their land on the shell Manazar the fifth. The later Assyrian ruler Sargon II and his son and successor Sennacherib were responsible for finishing the 20 year demise of Israel's northern 10 tribe kingdom. Although they did not overtake the kingdom of Judah, Jerusalem was besieged but not taken. The tribes forcibly resettled by Assyria later be became known as the Ten Lost Tribes. Okay? <clears throat> so, you, as you can see right here, out of Samaria, they were taken different parts of the Middle East. Over here, that's where they relocated at during that time frame. Okay, so they got some information here, but the main focal point we're going to deal with 722 BC. That's when the bulk of our brothers and sisters in the north got taken out of their land. It says in 722, 722 BC, 10 to 20 years after the initial deportation, the ruling city of the northern kingdom of Israel, Samaria was finally taken by Sargon II 
after a three-year siege started by Shalmanazar V. And they got the, they have the biblical account. You can check out for yourself, 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 3 to 6. And we're going to get into that. And we're going to get into the Apocrypha. It's all about continuing to prove who our people are today and edify the elect. Because, you know, here at Great Millstone, when the apostles and elders on down, that's what we try to push to our people. The 100% truth. Link it up with biblical facts. This is 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 1. In the 12th year of, of Ahaz, king of Judah, began Hosea, the son of Elah, to reign in Samaria over Israel nine years. So when you go into the account, it was a lot of uh, dethroning going on in the north. Hosea got up in the city because he killed um Hebrew name for the guys Pequa is Pika, another northern king. He got uh dethroned and, and Hosea got, got up in there. So it was a lot of usurping going on, man. It was a lot of infighting going on. A lot of things was going on doing the doing the split between the north and the south. Okay, we at one point we have fought against each other. Wars broke out between the north and the south. You know, so this is this is our history. Uh, uh, as you see today, Israel killing each other. There's no, no need to sun. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, but not as the kings of Israel that were before him. So th these are the reasons why these type of things happen to us as a people. Because we, we you know, start to go off against our, our power and he bring calamity upon us. Which is captivity, slavery. Against him came up Shalmanazar, king of Assyria, and Hosea became his servant and gave him presents. And the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hosea, but he had sent messengers to see to to uh, Salaki, but he had sent messengers to so king of Egypt and brought no present. To the king of Assyria as he had done year by year therefore the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him in prison so we're going to jump down to the to the main points start at verse 6 it says in the ninth year all right <clears throat> I'm sorry I'm going to continue to read that then the king of Assyria came up throughout all the land and went up to Samaria and besieged it three years and go to verse 6, it says, In the ninth year of Hosea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria and placed them in Hala and in Hobar by the river of Gazan and the city of the Medes. Okay, so this goes back, goes back into, this, into this map right real quick. All right. So we're going to deal with uh, the deportation of Shalmanazar the fifth. And that's the red right here. The red arrows. All right. For it was, for so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against Yahweh by Shimei Washai, their God, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the land of Pharaoh the king. And had feared other gods and walked in the statues of the heathen. So idolatry, it's a big no-no with Yahweh Hashem Yahweh All these commandments is set forth for a reason. But when you worship in other idols, other, uh, other deities, the Most High is a jealous power. He will jack you up, you know. So th this is why it happened. And of the king of Israel, which they had made. And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against Yahweh their God. And they, and they built them high places in all their cities from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced city. And they set them up images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. So can you imagine that? So this is when we were a monarch. You know, but even though we split, we still had control over our land and, and things of that nature. We still had a heritage. So our people went from serving their God, 
Yahweh Shai to serving idols. Same thing going on again today, man. You understand? That's why we are in this predicament as a whole. And there they, they burnt incense in all the high places as did the heathen whom the Lord carried away before them and wrought wicked things to provoke the Yahweh to anger. For they serve idols, wherefore the Lord had said unto them, He shall not do this thing. Okay? So where are we? So I'm going to jump down to, to verse... Uh, You know, there's a lot of reading. You can read this for yourself. So I'm going to jump down to verse uh, 16 on down. It says, And they left all the commandments of Yahweh their God and made them molten images, even two calves. So where did, I, where did they get that from? It all goes back to uh, the golden calves go back to ancient Egypt when we left and we were in the wilderness. So during the split of Jeroboam and Rehoboam, Rehoboam had the south, that's King Solomon's son. And Jeroboam had the north and he was the one who brought back this the, uh, the, the worship of the golden calves. Okay, he was a servant under Solomon. And made a grove and worship all the hosts of heaven and serve Baal, which another word is Satan. They got into Satanism, man. All right. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire. So they were sacrificing their children. And used divination and enchantments. So our people, so these these captivities were justifiable. And sold and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of Yahweh to provoke him to anger. So people had a reprobate mind on them, man. Therefore, the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. So you might, when you read this, you might think it was just Judah only. No, it was Judah and Benjamin, the house of Judah and Levi, of course. That remain. And they got taken down by the Babylonians years later. So it was not this, this, this Judah maintained that uh, the scepter, the throne. So also Judah kept not the commandments of Yahweh their God, but walked in the statue of Israel, which they made. And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel and afflicted them and delivered them into the hand of spoilers. Until he had cast him out of his sight. For he had for he rent Israel from the house of David. And they made Jeroboam the son of Nebat king. And Jeroboam drove Israel from following the Lord and made them sin a great sin. All right. For he rent Israel out of the hand, I'm sorry, for the children, verse 22, for the children of Israel walk in all the sins of Jeroboam, which he did. They departed not from them until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight, as he had said by his servants, the prophets, who was Israel, so, so was Israel carried away out of their land unto Assyria unto this day. See that? So that's what happened, man. Okay, so they got carried away into the land of Assyria, and pretty much you had heathens that came up in there and lived. Hamite nations, it goes into verse 24. So that's that's why it happened. This thing just, you know, something just happened out of nowhere. That's why it happened. People were given over to divinations, worshiping Baal, sacrificing their children. And so the most side brought in spoilers to mess our, our, our brothers and sisters up, man, back then. And these are the same people coming back. But today the most side is gathering the small remnant from the four corners of the earth. And another biblical account, because I got this book I want to pull up real quick. You go into the Apocrypha, one of the famous scriptures, 2 Ezra 13. All right. <clears throat> I 
and started uh, verse 40. It says, uh, those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king, who shall Manazar the king of Assyria led away captive, and he carried them over the waters, so they came they into another land. So this is another land. You see the waters right here? These are rivers right here, the red arrows. And this is another land where they came into. The land of Assyria, Babylon area. See, Babylon all the, way, all the way down there, but this is the area our people got carried away out of their land. Okay? But they took this counsel among themselves that they may leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never, where never, where never mankind dwelt. So that's dealing with what? North, Central, and South America today. That they might there keep their statues which they never kept in their own land. And I gave you the biblical account. And they enter into, into Euphrates by the narrow places of the river. For the most side then showed signs for them. And he held still the flood till they were passed over. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely a year and a half. And the same region is called Arsareth. So they came over to the North and Central South America. All right. They left the Middle East. Let me pause it real quick. Let me get the map, how they travel. All right. I couldn't find a, a, a good map to show, but pretty much, as you can see right here in the red in the middle. All right. That's Israel. And then we got carried. Oh, my goodness, man. So we got carried from, from, you know, our people got carried from, from Israel into uh, the land of Assyria. And when they took counsel, they came all the way from the Middle East, all the way under Africa, and came over to the Americas, man. All right. I'm trying to find some better maps, but here's a good one right here. Bam. Bam. This is a good one. If it could all unblurry, unblurry itself, so to speak. All right. Well, you can see right here with the red from the Middle East under the under Africa, all the way to North, Central, and South America. I was trying to find a better image, but that's that's the best I could do right now. You know. And this is where they settle, you know, form different colonies and things of that nature, man. Great empires. But this is mainly uh, the uh, Native Americans, the, the Gadite tribe, tribe of Gad and Reuben. This is the area where they majority settle in North America. So going back to the scriptures. For, for through. That country, there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half in the same region that's called Arsareth, which today is the, is the Americas. OK, so I got this book. All right. Called the Ten Tribes of Israel. Remember, when they got scattered. They were called what? The Ten Lost Tribes. All right. It says the tribes forcibly resettled by Assyria later became known as the Ten Lost Tribes. So, bam, so there's a book. And you got Hebrew one there and what it looked like. One of our native brothers. The Ten Tribes of Israel or the true history of the Northern American Indians showing that they are descendants of the Ten Tribes. And this is uh, some pictures from another book I had. This is from American Holocaust. I have, you know, from the beloved brothers. So the girl of Kiowa Nation who lived in Colorado, Texas, and Oklahoma, Great Plains. Another picture. A Ness Pierce boy from the Columbia Plateau region of Washington, Idaho. 
the name of the Kansas people who live in Oklahoma, Nebraska, and I'm sorry, Kansas, Great Plains. So let's get into this book real, real quick. It says, preface, many years ago, the attention of the compiler of following pages was first called to the subject by hearing a lecture delivered by a highly educated Cherokee Indian, that's the tribe of Gad, on the manners and customs of the variation Indian tribes of North America. During the course of his remark, he stated that when we came to study the Hebrew language, he was astonished to, to find so much of his own language that was pure Hebrew. And after the enumerating the various words of his own language that were Hebrew, he found them to exceed 50. And said he, we were taught this by our, by our ancestors and they received it from their Hebrew ancestor, the 10 tribes. Okay. It says exceeded 50, but you know, the original Hebrew, I think is like 20 some characters might be mistaken, but you know, as the years pass on our people, you know, different dialects and same thing with the Spanish and so on and so forth. And furthermore, he stated that he was, was as firmly convinced that the Indian tribes of North America were descendants of the 10 tribes of Israel as he was of any other fact. All right, there it is. The statement induced us to examine history on this question, and we have found many facts corroborating the testimony of the red man of the forest. Though deferring from some other writers on this subject, we have the testimony of the number of the most eminent men of America to sustain our position. All right, so moving on, excuse my finger. <laughs> It says the following is taken from the Apocrypha, 2nd Ezra 13, verse 40 to 45, where I just read to you, to show when the 10 tribes left the eastern country to come to a land not inhabited by man. I mean, come on now. These are all facts. These are the 10 tribes which was carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea and the, the king who shall Manazar, the king of Assyria, led away captive. He carried them over the waters, and you, you, already know how, you already know how it goes. The same region is called Arsara. I'm just going to jump now. Now, what are we to learn from, from foregoing history? First, we are taught that they understood the geography of the country and the distance they must travel in order to get to this land where no man dwelt. And how did they understand that? We had... Uh, uh, knowledge of the of the seas, knowledge of the lands. King Solomon was sending people over here during his reign, so that information was passed down unto us. Okay, we had ships. We were we were we were under a monarch system, very rich. Okay, and second, there was no country in the east, uh, uh, but what was more or less inhabited by man. And consequently, America was the only country at the time known that was not inhabited. So years ago, we had this argument with these, these clowns dealing with uh, the type of exotic animals was being brought back here and they try to link it to Asia and all that. Well, you got to go deeper. It was coming from over here from the Americas. You know, Talk about King Solomon and it ain't come over here. That's a damn lie. Another excerpt from this book. The following is from J.J. Momber's History of Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, page 68. Being an extract from a letter written by William Penn to the commun community of the Free Society of Traders in London, England, 1683, he states of the origin of the native, I mean, of the North American Indian, I'm ready to believe them of the Jewish race. I mean the stock of the of the <laughs> I mean the stock of the ten tribes. And that for the following reason. First they were to go to a land not planted or known, which to be sure Asia and Africa were, if not Europe, and he that intended that extra extraordinary uh judgment 
upon them might make the passage not uneasy to them, as it is not impossible in itself from the uh, easternmost part of Asia to the westernmost part of America. You know, they try to confuse all these freaking words. Just say they came over here, man. Goodness. In the next place, I find them of the light continents and their children of so lively resemblance that a man will think himself in Duke's place or Berry Street, London, when he see it them. But this is not at all. They agree and writes, they reckon by moons. They reckon by moons. Dealing with the new moons, the Sabbaths. The high holy days, all the high holy days, all based upon the new moons and stuff like that, man. They offer their first fruits, the feast of first fruits. They have a kind of feast of tabernacles. I mean, plain and simple. They are set to lay their altar upon twelve stones. They mourning a year, customs of women. And many other things that do not now occur. See? So they're keeping the commandments. So I'm finishing off with this. It says, Rev. J. Dodds, pastor of congregation in Western Pennsylvania. And who takes an interest in the Hebrew language tells me that they are inscription in the ruins of the city of Palenqua, Central America. That's the tribe of Zebulon. It seems to confer Dr. Boynoit's theory thought in his, in his star in the West. The compiler of this volume consulted a Jewish priest relating to those Hebrew words on the coin described above, and he gave the translation, translation as we have given it. So they found artifacts in Central America. All right. So, so closing out, it says, Reverend, you know, this is all in this book I, I have here from a uh, beloved brother. It says, the Rev. W.M. Smith, a Presbyterian minister among the Indians, who had finished a translation of the New Testament in the Mohegan language, told the writer that he had for years labored to make a paradigm of the Mohegan verb at length, it struck me that it was cast in the Hebrew mold, and I made this one, which I will allow you. It was printed on a large sheet, and any Hebrew scholar would at once recognize the suffixes and affixes of the Hebrew Bible. At the time the writer heard this, Mr. Smith was in Albany, superintendent and publication of the Mohegan Testament, Several years before that, that, the writer of this article had seen a grammar of the Chilean language. Chile, right? The Chilean language. Who's in Chile? Argentina, Chile, the tribe of Naphtali. And the verb was cast in Hebrew mold. No Hebrew scholar could doubt this. It may be said that Chile is South America. Very true, but let it remembered on our side that Hebrew immigrants had been in America 500 years before the anointed. And of course, the Mexicans are the descendants of the Hebrews. If it be true that the Chileans are... Okay. If it be true that the Chileans are... Read it again. And of course... I'm sorry, and of course the Mexicans are descendants of the Hebrews, if it be true that the Chileans are. The people of Chile and Mexico are Hebrews, Hebrew Israelites, of the respective tribes. Judge uh, Breckenridge, who was secretary of the le legation to Mexico, told the writer that the language of the Mexicans was a very jingling language, a, a great language many consonants and few vowels, and that it resembled the language of the Tartars, but, you know, it goes into dealing with the Hebrew. All right? So that's it, man. You know? So the ten tribes of Israel links up with the prophecies, man. 
the ten lost tribes that was carried away captive by the Assyrian captivity, by the Assyrians, which is all prophesied in the scriptures. And we're here to bring it to our people. If you can receive it, uh, the North, Central, South American Indians of uh, Native American, Seminole descent, Spanish-speaking tribes, you make up of, of the ten lost tribes of Israel. All right? And the Haobah Shimei Awashai is bringing us back into one powerful nation, starting with the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom coming back, the Negro tribes, Judah, Benjamin, Levi, with the northern brothers and sisters into one. Okay? And this time, only the small remnant is going to make it, and we're going to rule the earth in righteousness under our Lord and Savior when he comes back the second time to redeem us and destroy this wicked kingdom. Shalom.